So um, what I'm trying to do now is uh, to bring uh, it's module three. Yeah. Yeah. Is uh, to to bring uh, down to very very practical what uh, Professor Chef was presenting you. So basically, here I'm going to use a tool which is produced by an Italian university in Bolzano. It's called OnTop. And uh, another tool which is produced by the Stanford University is called Protégé. It's an ontology editor tool. And together, okay, they will somehow allow us to solve, even if in a very tiny example, and that integration problem. Okay, that is uh, what you will see now. Um, it's very practical, and of course you don't have to do it, but if you want, uh, there is uh, all the uh, links uh, to where you can do it yourself in case you, you want to try it. Huh? So uh, as an agenda, I will uh, propose you a database from the medical domain, very, very simple with very few data. Um, then uh, we will um, somehow model this uh, database using an ontology just to capture the semantics of the tables. Okay, so there are tables, but the tables mean more than what is written in the tables themselves. And then we will use this software. So it's uh, basically a graphical user interface that uh, is in front of uh, a lot of semantic technologies uh, to solve the data integration problem, pose a query uh, on the ontological model and get results out of the database. Yeah. So, Let's start from uh, the, the database. Yeah? So the database uh, is a classical healthcare database. So you have uh, patients, uh, doctors, and uh, this uh, table in the middle that uh, capture the relationship. Yeah? So it's uh, patient that are treated by doctor and doctor that treats patient, depending which way you want to read it. And then there is this uh, second table down here that captures a different way to uh, go to the doctor, uh, which is uh, ask for a second consultation. Uh, so you have, you have been given a treatment by a doctor, and you want to check whether this is correct. So you go to a consultant, and you ask for a consult. Hmm? Um, so the patient are Elis and Bob, the doctor is David, the consultant is Ernest, and uh, the, the, the various IDs do the mappings. Okay? Pretty, pretty simple, right? I was saying that uh, here you have uh, more than what is written in the database, meaning that if you look at this from a set theory, what you have is a set of patients, a set of doctors, you have a relationship okay, that goes uh, from doctor to patient that is named treats. You have another relationship, which is the inverse, that goes uh, from patient to doctor, is treated by. If I state one, I implicitly state the other one. So that is what I mean by being one, the inverse of the other one. And then I have a subset of the doctors, the consultants. And uh, when uh, a patient, uh, goes to a consultant, uh, is not treated, okay, is actually consulting the, the, the consultant. Okay? So it's a special way to uh, instantiate the relationship uh, is treated by. Uh, it's the one where the domain is the patient, but the range is a subset uh, of all doctors and are those that offer consultancy service. Okay? So now you can see that this ontology that we are doing is capturing semantics, right? So it's uh, giving based on some theory. In this case, we are using set theory, but one can use different uh, uh, logical frameworks and have different uh, ontological languages. Yeah? But based on set theory, we are capturing some semantics, OK? And if you have a reasoner that can treat uh, set theory, uh, you can basically do things like, uh, I have uh, a point in this set, uh, is it in this set? The reasoner will say yes. Okay, so if you have a consultant, you have a doctor. And imagine that you have uh, something like uh, 11 consults uh, 12. Okay, you have range and domain constraints. 11 
must be a patient, otherwise he cannot be in the domain of consults, and 12 must be a consultant. Okay, so just having 11 consult 12 means that uh, 11 is a patient, 12 is a consultant, and therefore is a doctor. And it's also implying that 11 is treated by 12. Okay, so all these are things that a reasoner does for you. Okay, it's basically using the set theory to work on the ontology and produce uh, implicit statements uh, that are there, but you don't write. The software. So the software, as I told you, is this uh, on top. And um, it is developed in a European project that is called Optic. The goal of Optic is uh, to do ontology-based data access. Okay, so you put an ontology in front of your data and you write queries on top of the ontology to access the data. And that is something we are doing, Amit was saying before, since the 90s, but at scale. So the project is trying to do this on big data. So you, you will see it on a very stupid database, but nobody prevents you to use uh, SQL on Spark and actually run it uh, on a terabyte of data. Okay? We have tried out with SQL on Spark, we've tried out with uh, Amazon Redshift. Uh, of course it works, right? Because the interchange level, as you will see, is SQL. Okay? So in that sense, it works. If you then want to ask a question in the end about why it does work, I can comment. So you can go on that site and uh, to, to do what I'm going to do, you download uh, this uh, Protege plus on top uh, bundle huh? and then you run it. Um, I'm g using a different database because these uh, tutorials are too complex for this kind of uh, short walkthrough, but the database H2 is the same. It's an in-memory database. Uh, the advantage of having in-memory database, you probably know, is that they are fast if you have enough RAM. Okay? The first commercial system that proved to be good in this sense is SAP ANA. Uh, you probably have heard about it. And the cool idea of this is that queries that on secondary store can take some minutes, in main memory can take milliseconds. Okay? So if you have enough money to buy, I don't know, 12, no, sorry, 128, sorry, gigabyte of RAM, okay, probably it doesn't cost that much, okay, you can store most of the data of a standard business into SAP ANA and run analytical query in milliseconds. Huh? That's why you buy SAP ANA, you put Tableau in front and you start browsing, okay, your data as if they were, I mean, there behind you, okay? That was impossible before in memory database. H2 is a nice open source version of that. So if you want to play with it, I, I recommend it. Now, when you start H2, which is pretty simple, okay, you download it and you run it from shell, like this. What happens is that uh, it, you open up a, a web page like this where you can connect to the database. Okay. Um, what, what we are doing now, we are simply using uh, some pre-configured stuff. So this is the idea of a, of a database which is already load behind. Okay. So if I connect, that what it looks like. There is a consult, consultant, doctor, patient, treat, uh, and so forth. Right. So exactly what I was talking about. Hmm? Yes, I'm sorry. It's because my browser is localized in Italian, but if you use uh, in English, <laughs> it's localized in English, of course. I, I was trying to switch to, to English, but... Uh, no, but don't worry, I open another browser, Just come on. Just log out from, the, from here. I, I think it should work. Yeah. No, I need to change the language. In the oh, really? Yes. The, if you log out here on the, the bottom on the most left... Do it. <laughs> ah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now it's in English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so this is the, the data. In the, in the wiki page, you can get the SQL uh, script and run it if you want. The idea is that you take it, 
you paste it uh, into this, you run it, and it creates the database for you. Okay, that's the, the general idea. Okay, so then to start the other stuff, it's also same thing. So you you go on command line and you run it. Um, on uh, Windows, you can double click the bot. And that's what uh, Protege looks like, okay? So it's a, a huge number of forms that capture many different things. So you have the classes, uh, and uh, here you can see op types, and then you have uh, the object property and data property that are respectively the relationship between objects and the relationship between objects and values, okay? A string, uh, a number, or, or whatever else. Okay, um, here are a couple of notes. If you want to do it, the JDBC driver is not uh, installed in the beginning, so there are small tunings, but you can work them out, and if not, you can ask. Okay, so what we do now, we load the ontology. Should be this one, if I remember. Okay, so here. You have doctor, you have patient, and consultant is a subclass of doctor. In the object properties, you have uh, is treated by and consult, which is a sub property of uh, is treated by and treats. If you explore them, you see what I was saying before, right? So, consult is a sub property of treated by, the domain is patient, and the range is consultant. So I don't know if you have done this, but the ontology engineer, when he does it manually, okay, he goes and say, I add the sub property here, and I add a range constraint, I add a domain constraint, and you go on like that. Okay, so we are not doing it, but you can image that uh, me can do this ontology in something like two minutes. Okay, larger ones takes months years to do, okay? But at this level, is doable. Huh? And I believe that uh, one of the key points uh, is the user interface. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of different uh, uh, tools, but the one that uh, normally works best is the one where the abstraction that you're looking for are there. So for me, that I'm a computer science, tables uh, and forms looks nice. Mm -hmm. If you go in a different domain, you may need different tools. Okay, so that is the big challenge uh, of having domain experts uh, do ontology engineer. Uh, because if you go to the domain of medicine, maybe this still works. But if you move away and you go to visual analytics community, you do not expect this to work. Uh, because they are not going to fill in uh, forms uh, in the way we do. Okay, so. It's, it's an art task, generally speaking, to provide the right tool to the right community. But, okay, this is where it's open source, it, it works. Okay, we did this. Now, the difference between the, the basic Protégé and this version of Protégé is that it has uh, the on top plugin loaded. Okay, so Protege is something like Eclipse for those of you that do code. Okay, so it's a plugin framework you can load as many plugins you like. And uh, when uh, you when you load uh, the on top plugin, what happens is that in this bar there are things like uh, the on top mapping, on top sparkle uh, panels. Okay, and um, the on top mapping is the place where the magic happens. Okay, so now we have an ontology, we have a database, but if we put queries, it does not work. Okay, what you need is to connect the two. Okay, and this is called mappings. Here in this very first uh, panel, what we do, we simply select the data source. Okay, so this is standard configuration. And if you click here, you test the connection, it's working. Then, in the mapping manager, what you have to do is to go here and uh, pick up a class, okay? For instance, doctor, and to map it to your database, okay? So the entire work consists in 
thinking about your conceptual model that is a sort of uh, on, on top <laughs> of everything, and then look down to the real data and connect to the real data. Right? Because there is no instances here. Huh? I didn't do it, but uh, if you go in the individuals, uh, you, you see no doctor, no patients, uh, no consultant. right? So if I add uh, an instance, it goes here, uh, but it's completely empty. So I did it before. So let's simply load them okay, and inspect them. This one is the mapping uh, for uh, a patient. Okay, It says, if you want to get an instance of patient and uh, its name, you have to go and query the patient table for ID and name, and then the ID becomes uh, the identifier, and the name becomes the filler of the data property name. Okay, so if you test it, you see that uh, we get the part of the database that we were discussing before. So you get one and two, Alice and Bob. Okay, and uh, those become what are called virtual triples. Okay, so. This is subject, property, uh, object, as Amit was presenting before. Subject, property, okay, uh, property value, sorry. And um, it's written in a way that you can instantiate them virtually from the database. And so the, the triple do not exist, but you can query them because they virtually exist, okay? So if I go to the, this interface, what was that? Patients, yes. And I write a query like this. So I'm saying, give me those P that are of type patient and give me the name. Okay. If I run it, it does not work. What, why? Because there is a reason in the middle. Okay. So this is working because there is an ontology. The reasoner takes the ontology reason on top of it and generates queries out of ontology. So let's start the reasoner. So I have to choose a quest, which is the reasoner that does the work for us. It's not a reasoner that given data will produce inferred data. This is a reasoner that does something completely different. You give the ontology, you give a query, and produce SQL query as output. Okay. So we start it, we do it again, and here you have the answer, okay? So the P property, the P var variable is mapped to one and two, and the name variable is mapped to Alice and Bob, okay? So le let's repeat it, or maybe let's go to the slide where this is illustrated. All the steps are here in the slide if you want to do them again. Hmm? My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a set of databases. In this case, it's just one, but it works for n databases. It doesn't no matter. You want answer out of this. But you're not going to write uh, the SQL on top of a database. So you're not going to use uh, uh, Oracle and do data integration using uh, federated uh, SQL. Uh, what you are going to do is to have an ontology, write a query in semantic web languages, Sparkle, on top of this ontology. And what you expect is that uh, this query is rewritten down into SQL, and the answer is exactly the same as if uh, the data were in RDF into the reasoner, okay? And this is why this scale, okay? So it's known that if you put the data into the reasoner, the reasoner will blow up because the query answering problem in a reasoner is exponential, okay? For given fragments, it can be polynomial, but the polynomial is something like P at the, the power of 100, okay? So it, indeed, it's almost exponential, but in this way, the reason in task is still exponential, but is done on the ontology only, okay? And then the query answering remains an SQL query answering. So, so it's, it's still polynomial with the very small uh, 
value at the exponent, okay? So, of course, it does not work in general, okay? It works only for a given type of query that are called conjunctive queries. So you can only state positive things. So I want uh, the patient, the name, the address, uh, and the relationship there with doctors. You can put filters, uh, but for instance, you cannot put uh, th these alternatives. Huh? So I want that or that. That is not possible. Or you cannot put optionalities. Huh? That, and in case that stuff is there, I also want it. That's not possible, because in a positive query, you can only state positive things. Huh? But in the end, this works. Huh? So you can imagine that for anything that looks like search in a standard information retrieval setting, this works perfectly. Huh? And also in many domains where you are interested in describing things. Okay? So that will perfectly work. Hmm? Okay. So let's see what we can get out of that database. Huh? So, sorry. So we were somehow looking at uh, the mapping for the patients. You can imagine that there is a mapping for the doctors that also works, and a mapping for the treatments that, uh, of course, also works. Okay, very similar. Maybe the mapping for the treatment is nice to see. Oh, we have better resolution now. Uh, this one. Okay, so the mappings treat. It's very similar, right? The SQL query goes on the treat table and fetch the ID of a doctor and the ID of a patient. And now it builds uh, a triple like this. Uh, so doctor treats patient. OK. Of course, the treats works. What is interesting is uh, what if I write uh, the inverse one? OK. So, If I go in the ontology under object property, I see that consult is the, sorry, I see that treated by is the inverse of treats. Okay, so this is what the ontology engineer wrote down. Okay, in the mappings, I did not map, as you see, treated by. Okay, I only map treats. But if I go here, <coughs> And I ask for who is treated by whom, okay? I got the answer. Of course, the thing is pretty easy, right? So if you are asking for treats, the reasoner can do the following, okay? I can produce the query that is the direct mapping, okay? And I just take it from the mappings. I fetch that. But I can put in or. OK, so either I find it by directly looking to that, or I simply invert the column, because I can switch uh, the, the property by inverting it, and I can query for that. OK, so this mapping will produce. Look for the treated by. You don't find any mapping. OK, you don't use it. Or look for treats by switching uh, the position of doctor and patient ID. OK, and then when the data come up, you simply turn them. Okay, so what you are no learning is that you have a conjunctive query as input, and what you do, you create a set of uh, queries, all in OR. Okay, so if somebody asks for a doctor, you look for doctors, and then you also look for consultants because you can find doctors both in the table doctors and in the table consultants. Okay, so that or that, you look for treats, uh, look up treats is treated by in the different direction and consults, okay? So this is what is the result. So a conjunctive query is rewritten in a union of a, an, an amount of uh, conjunctive queries that you deduce from the database, from the ontology, okay? Only the terminological part. Huh? Any question? Um, 
here what we are doing is uh, seeing exactly what I was saying before. So we go on doctors, we query it, and you see Ernest coming up. Okay, how can Ernest be there? If you look in the mappings, I'm mapping doctor to doctor. I'm mapping consultant to consultant. So if I query for doctor, how is a consultant coming up? Right? Very simple. Okay. So the reasoner does it for you. Okay. He knows that when you ask for doctor, you should you should also look up consultants. Okay. Of course, if you are missing the, the mapping, you will have incomplete results. Okay? So that is a, a second drawback of this technique. So the results are always correct, but they can be incomplete if the mapping is incomplete. Okay? But yeah, that, that's normal. Even if you use database technology to do it, so you take uh, Oracle and you use the uh, um, uh, data man metadata management tool, Okay, it allows you to create schema of schemas, but if you don't do all the mappings, you will have incomplete results. Eh? It's exactly the same. All right. So that was it. Huh? Um, and I don't know if you noticed huh? before we saw it. We have uh, some free consult 12. Okay, this is something that normally in a database is not going to happen. Uh, indeed, I remove uh, the arrows that were there before that normally should be interpreted as uh, foreign key constraints. Okay, and now uh, I have data here that do not respect uh, the constraints. Hmm? So somehow here you are learning something that is very interesting. What you can do with ontologies that you cannot do with schemas, for instance, you can have uh, open word assumption. Hmm? So in a standard database, uh, this will not happen because it will violate some schema constraints that are very exactly for, for preventing that you input wrong data. Okay, so normally if you put three there, three must be in the patients, and if you put 12 there, 12 must be even in, it must be in consultant. Okay, it must be there. Okay, because what uh, a schema does for you is checking constraints. Okay, and making sure that all the data are clean and input in the right way. Why? Because it's using closed word assumption. So what is not there is false. Okay, so that is the closed word assumption. Here we are allowing to violate constraints because we have an ontology that describes semantics. So even if uh, you don't write that 3 is a patient and 12 is a consultant, the ontology stated for you. Okay, so this is actually something that you gain from the ontology. Uh, and that is very useful when 3 and 12 do not come from the same database. Uh, so in this moment, we are using one database. But image that you have several different databases. Okay? It's okay that uh, in some database, some constraints are violated because simply in that specific domain, that is not a violation. Uh, it's simply something that you assume to be okay. Right? You take a common separated value phi from the web, you don't expect it to contain perfect data. Yeah? It was a dump from some database. So maybe it was input correctly, maybe not. Okay? But if you have ontology to interpret it, and we go back to the pyramid of uh, uh, Professor Sheff, okay? so the pyramid allows you to do interpretation of the data. Hmm? So here we have 3 and 12, but we have an ontology. The ontology al allows us to interpret 3 to be a patient and 12 to be a consultant. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Is it with the help of domain and range? Uh, yes, of course. That is exactly the way it works. We put the domain and range constraints. Yes. Yeah. Here. Thank you for bringing the domain, right? So the, the reason why it works is because we stated explicitly that the domain of consults is patient and the range of consults is consultant. If you take those two axioms away from the ontology, the ontology will not derive this. Uh, if you have those into the ontology, then the ontology does the derivation. And maybe we can also try to take them away. Let, let's see if it works or if we crash the tool. <laughs> Remember, that is just research stuff. Huh? So let's go here. Uh, what we want to do is uh, run again this one, if I remember.
and see that we have 12 and 13, which is OK. And then go back to patients. Oh, they are not there. OK, that, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, ah, yes, they are not there. Why? Uh, that's another interesting point. They are not there because we are also asking for the name. OK, so if we take the name away, We don't get anything. Cool enough. I have to re no. I don't have to resynchronize the index. No, should not be that case. Uh, let's do this. I believe that is caching it. So. Ah, that was patience. Okay. Sorry? Yes, it was written here, I'm sure. It got something like, uh, oh, 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 what you're writing? What are you asking for? You're missing that and that. Thank you. <laughs> right. OK. Yes. OK, got it. Thank you. OK, so three is here, right? And if we have for daughters, maybe with uh, the right syntax, we got 12, OK? So now let's try what you were asking for. And we crash everything. So we go to object properties, to consults, and we take away these two constraints. Then we do stop the reasoner and start it again, because synchronize sounds like uh, incremental, and it will probably destroy everything. Yeah, it's no longer there. And I guess also patient, right? OK, so it's really that specific axiom here uh, where we say the domain is patient, OK, of consults. Uh, yeah, the reason why it goes up, OK? Any question? Too fast? <laughs> Too terribly fast? <laughs> Just like uh, it has inferred by itself the patient ID and the consultant ID, what happened in the case of name? Because there is no relation, it doesn't work. So what you would like is the following, but I, I think it's not working. So in Sparkle, what you want is to do something like this. OK, so Sparkle allows you to, to write these kind of things. Huh? I want the patients, and if they have a name, give me the name. If they don't have it, I, I, I can't survive, OK? If I remember, it says this, OK? It says, ah, <laughs> we don't support uh, optional. Huh? And, and the reason is that in this specific example, it's very simple to treat, very simple. Because uh, um, one just just have to do a, a left join that allows null in, and it, it will work. But generally speaking, you can think that during the reasoning, you may end up uh, um, having conflicts. 
right? So in some classes, name may be there. In other classes, may, may not be there. And so you no longer know if you have to do a left join, accepting null or not. And so you cannot generate the query. Uh, that is specifically related to this problem of uh, you have to ask for conjunctive, positive conjunctive queries. Mm? Because otherwise you introduce uh, a disjunction and you can no longer rewrite it as a disjunction of conjunctive query. Uh, that, that is uh, the problem here. Um, and it's a, it's a big limitation. I, I really believe that this, uh, especially in the big data setting, where of course you don't know the data, and so you may miss uh, uh, results because you ask for a too constrained query. But if you think is exactly what happens on Google, if you type 22 uh, keywords, normally it says, uh, uh, I try with three, the rest I ignore, right? So that's what it does. So it try there is the number that fits uh, and, and then drop the others because otherwise the result is always empty. Mm -hmm. So th that is happening on, on any search engine. Only you have to be accustomed to it when, when you write queries, because otherwise you, you tend to, to forget. Because SQL gives you this power, right? So, yeah. Um, another question? I was too quick, sorry. Normally I do this with people that uh, practice. And I mean, it, it takes one hour and a half to do this because, of course, I, um, I can't catch up. <laughs> you can't catch up exactly. <laughs> I mean, f following the, the the walkthrough is pretty simple, but uh, <laughs> uh, shall we go to the uh, demonstration? Next one, but uh, I think uh, the guy is going to come in five minutes to change. Okay, maybe you have m other questions. So I, I actually, I'm not really expert on this, but um, I have a question about reasoners. Yeah. H how do they actually work? Um, I mean, because here I worked with the protege to add create an ontology. Yes. But I don't know what is the, the, the point of using a reasoner. Right, so. I mean, just a Yes, yes, yes. Question. So normally, when you, st you start protege, you have Hermit, but you can have uh, many others as plugins. You may wonder why do I need them? So normally a reasoner is needed because when, wh when you write an ontology, you want to know whether you are writing correct things or wrong things. And one thing that the reasoner does for you is checking the consistency, okay? So if you write something that is uh, self-contradicting, the reasoner will tell you, no, you cannot write this. Uh, for instance, the classical example is uh, the mad cow. Uh, so you write uh, that uh, there are carnivores and herbivores. Carnivores eat uh, uh, animals, and herbivores eat vegetables or parts of vegetables. Okay, and then suddenly you end up uh, with a model in the mad cow that eats uh, part of animals. Okay, and uh, when you run the reasoner, the reasoner says this is impossible because either it is an herbivore or it cannot and then it cannot eat uh, parts of animals, or it eats parts of animals, and therefore is not an, is not an herbivore anymore. Okay, so it cannot, the concept mad cows actually broke the ontology. Okay, so th that is one example. The other reason why you use a reasoner is because in the ontology modeling uh, process, you normally start with something that is very similar to requirements that are done in the form of uh, competency questions. So you start saying, out of this, I want uh, to get the doctors and I expect this, I want to get the patient and I expect that, and I want to get, uh, okay, so you ask this question. Then you run the reasoner and you look at the results, and if in the results you find uh, uh, something that uh, you do not expect, then you did an, an, an error in the modeling. Uh, and that is often the case because you are in the open world assumption, okay, so for instance, um, here, nowhere is stated that patients are not doctors. And actually, in reality, that can happen, right? So if uh, you start ad adding data and you discover that uh, uh, there is a, something like uh, a doctor that shows up in the patients, uh, you may wonder whether this is an error or not, okay? And 
I don't know if uh, no if I use a quest it does not work but if I use Hermit if I remember I can uh, click the diagnosis button and that will say I deduce this because and it gives you a justification uh, so it's a, a set of axioms uh, and uh, um, computations that tells you why you got to that result okay so in this sense you may discover that for instance that is a doctor yes but in that case it plays the role of patient okay which is possible in reality right so that is what a reason is normally used for huh? you use it uh, during the modeling uh, to check whether you are doing the terminology in the right way you use it during the modeling to check whether you are producing results that are wrong okay and these are the norm are the two of the standard uh, criteria to check the quality of an ontology and later on you use it to derive implicit knowledge huh? so what we do for instance in uh, uh, in in the kind of tweet analytics that we, that we normally do uh, is you have tweets in you have a semantic annotation goes on so it will basically find all the entities and then you ask for things like give me all the tweets that talk about sport okay so sport is not there you have uh, that specific soccer player that specific basketball player that specific team okay and how do you get down to sports in this way so you have an ontology that represents sports you have all the classes and somehow when you ask for sport you are asking for all the others in in uh, in this junction okay so th that's the thing that uh, you, we normally do so you query for implicit information uh, that is not stated but is there and common sense normally tells you yes it's there but because it's our brain doing the reasoning huh? any other question so for, for the URI yeah the URI? So the URI, you just get it from above there, right? From above this one? Yes. Right. From the up one, right? From the one that, uh, how you named the own? Yes, here. So normally, yeah, w no. when you model an ontology, you are supposed to give metadata to the ontology, because then you may have a repository of ontology, you may want to reason on the, of the, on the repository of ontologies. Yeah? So one task that Amit was talking about is you have some data and you have to map them. Which ontology shall I use? Okay, so the metadata of the ontology will help you doing that. So if you go on uh, Obofoundry, which you pointed to, right? Obofoundry is a, a big repository of medical ontology database, or medical ontologies. And what you can do, you can query the, the uh, the repository. So which are the ontology that uh, talk about drugs? And among them, which are the ontology that uh, are connected to genes? Uh, because you have a database of genes, you have a database of drugs, and your question is, uh, who are the drugs that are known to treat uh, given uh, disease that are caused by gene uh, problems? Okay, And this is probably not a query that you can ask on one single database. You have to ask it uh, across a number of databases. Yeah? So uh, that, that is another thing that happens. And here, where you, where you don't read, here there is annotations. You can add a number of, of annotations. So you can say uh, who did it, when, why, which version is this, uh, and uh, things like that. Huh? Any other question? So uh, let's just uh, take a step uh, while we wait for the person who might want to change the video or the clip. Just go over uh, the rest of the schedule. He's promoted. Who? He's promoted. He has to present. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right, yeah. So just to get a sense of, you know. Promote is next, Promote? Uh, yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. You cannot read. I'm. I, I don't know why yes. we went to this a very high resolution, but we can do this.
kind of challenges we faced and what kind of applications which you can really build using SSM ontology. And there is also a part on social data annotation. I think uh, Dr. Sheth will probably you know, uh, present some of the things we have done in, the, in that space. Okay. So, okay. And so, so, this is, so tomorrow, uh, okay, so tomorrow is the more heavy duty part, right? Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow we, we do the string processing. So I, I start with uh, the, the introduction on uh, data stream management system and composite event processor, which are the two technologies uh, to, to, to do velocity. And then Ricardo will do a walkthrough on uh, a tool, an open source tool that does uh, the two things that I said before. And then we have uh, uh, your group giving a presentation on uh, uh, Twitteris, right? Mm. So, okay. Is uh, Pawan involved there? No. No, Pawan is the last uh, day. The last day. Yeah. The last day we have. Uh, but if you want to, to, to bring it forward, it's okay. Huh? Because uh, here we may have um, a, a bit time constraints, probably.